Can I hear what we're doing? Uh, thank you, Jesus. Can I hear it? Way up there? Thank you. Thank you, Jesus. Okay, good. I think we lowered it Thursday. You got it? E flat? Good morning. Praise the Lord, everybody. It's a good day to praise the Lord. It's a good day. It's a good day. This is our call to worship. We want to we want to set this atmosphere for a mighty move of God today. Amen. How many need something from the Lord today? Hallelujah. Well, what we're going to do is we're going to send up Judah first. We're going to send up the praises to our king. Hallelujah. Come on, clap your hands. says, Behold, how good and how pleasant it is for brethren and sisterin to dwell together in unity. So let's all get on one accord. Let's get our minds on what we're here to do, and that's to glorify the Lord. Amen. Hallelujah. Come on. Thank you. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you. In my heart. Jesus, thank you, Jesus, thank you, thank you, Jesus, thank you. Any thankful folks in the house? Jesus, Hallelujah. In my heart, oh, thank you, Jesus, thank you, thank you, Jesus, thank you, thank you, Jesus, thank you, Jesus, thank you. in my heart. One more time, thank you, Jesus, thank you, Jesus, thank you. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus, thank you. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you in my heart. Thank you. 
grateful. Hallelujah. The Bible says to enter into his gates with thanksgiving. Hallelujah. Enter into his courts with praise. Be thankful unto him and bless his name Hallelujah. for the Lord is good. Hallelujah. I said yeah. the Lord is good. Yeah. 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 <laughs> his mercy is everlasting Thank you, Jesus. and his truth endures to all generations. Hallelujah. 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 We want to welcome him want to welcome our special guest. He is the main thing this morning. Having his presence here with us is what's essential. We need your presence, Lord. We want your presence. We love your presence, Lord. Lord, you're welcome in this place. Lord, you are welcome in this place. Lord, you are welcome in this place. Lord, you are welcome in this place. Have your way. Come on, help me lift this song up, Lord. Lord, you are welcome. 
what place we're talking about? Where is the place? Where is the place where we're welcome? In our hearts. We're not just talking about the building, the location, but in your heart, welcome him today. You are the temple. You are the temple. Lord, you are welcome. Lord, you are welcome. In this place, this place. This place, this place. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Have your way in me, God. Lord, you're welcome. All in this place. Come on, tell him, have your way. Come on, tell him again. Lord, you're welcome. Lord, you are welcome. In this place. Oh, yes, Lord, we surrender. Something today. Hallelujah. Have your way. Have your way, Lord Jesus. Have your way. Hallelujah. Yes, Lord. He wants to bless you. He he longs to dwell in our presence. Your praise invites him to dwell. Thank you, Lord. Praise him.
Bible says the kingdom of God suffereth violence. The devil done pulled out all the stops. He's attacking on every hand. Every household he's attacking. But it said the violent, talking about us, take it by force. God is our rock and our salvation. He's a strong deliverer. He's a strong deliverer. He's a strong deliverer. He's strong. He is strong. <laughs> you free to praise him today. I don't know what you're waiting on. <laughs> You gotta praise him first. You gotta praise him first. Yeah. Hallelujah, welcome. <laughs> We're glad you're here. We wanna welcome each one. We wanna greet each other this morning. Come on, move out of your aisles and greet somebody this morning. Hallelujah, speak life upon them. Speak blessings upon them. We're glad you're here today. I'm so glad. I'm so glad you're here today. May God's blessings come your way. May you feel his warm embrace, his warm embrace as we worship, as we worship in this. No matter what you're going through, no matter what you're going through, God is here for you. So believe me when I say I'm so glad you're here. Come on, greet someone, greet someone. I'm so glad you're here today. May God's blessings come your way.
our pastor. Amen. Good morning and praise the Lord to everybody. It's good to see everyone this morning. We're thanking God for his goodness, for his grace, and for his mercy. Amen. Thank God for his protection. Thank God for his many blessings unto us. Thanking God for being our God, faithful and true. Amen. Amen. We are, we are we're blessed to have another opportunity just to gather ourselves together corporately and to worship our God. Amen. Worship him in spirit and in truth. Amen. It's there, there are so many things that are going on in our world. Amen. And we should we should make worshiping and serving God a premium in our lives. Amen. We're living in some perilous times. The evil men and seducers are waxing worse and worse. But thank God that our hope is in God. Our confidence is in the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. We depend on him. Amen. And we are looking for his appearing. Amen. Amen. We're looking for his appearing. Scripture reminds us to look up for our redemption draweth nigh. And it is nearer, the appearing and the coming of the Lord is nearer than when we first believed. And I'm glad. I'm glad. I'm glad. I'm looking forward to going with the Lord. Amen. I'm looking forward. I'm looking forward. I don't, I don't have to accomplish nothing else down here. I'm not looking for position or nothing. I want the Lord to come and get us all out of this mess. <laughs> Amen. I, I can't get, yeah, some of y'all don't seem like, you, well, me, maybe your roots are too entrenched down here. Amen. Amen. But, I, but we got we to gotta wear this world as a loose-fitting garment. I, 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 something wrong with you can't get excited about living for the Lord and looking for him to come. Some, I, I, I don't know, I don't know, I don't have flashy words, but all I have is come Lord Jesus, <laughs> amen, and look up for your redemption drawer of night. That's why we got in here, isn't that right? Uh, hey, come on, we got to, we, we, as a man thinketh in his heart, so is he. I'm thinking, Lord, come on, come on, Lord, <laughs> amen, 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 and he's on his way back. Glory, hallelujah. If you're worshiping with us for the very first time and you did not receive a welcome packet, if you raise your hand, our sanctuary support team will ensure that you receive a welcome packet. Amen. If you're in the sanctuary and you did not receive a bulletin, you raise your hands and we will ensure that you receive a bulletin. Amen. Is Sister, is Sister Crutchfield here? Not yet? All right. Uh Okay, so you're going to fill in for Sister Crutchfield for the health care presentation? Are you? All right, great. I just wanted to know. I, I wanted to know. I'm going to shift some things around as, we, as it stands for our announcements, and I want to make a special appeal. I want to make a special appeal uh, for our Community Unity Day. I know we have our, our youth pastor and administrator that's, uh, schedule, but I want to make a special appeal because we need you on our community unity day. Amen. We need you on our community unity day. We need we need we need your your presence. We need your your cheerful spirit. We need your sense of contact and connect with the community. We need your witnessing spirit by the way we. We encourage others in the park on Athens and in our community just to come and to hang with us, just to come and be around us. We need your smiling face. We need your generous spirit. We need, we need 
your, your work also. We need you to come and volunteer. Amen. Amen. We need you. We need you uh, between 9 and 10 a.m. on Saturday to help transport uh, our things to the park. Right. And then we need volunteers from three to four uh, to help return the items to our church. So we need everybody. everybody. Amen. We need everybody. This is an opportunity. Years ago, I uh, the Lord dropped in my mind to take our church, what we were calling our church picnic, take it to the community. Amen. As an opportunity to witness. And also, we're going to uh, be giving out extra food certificates. All right, so besides the normal 50 that we give out every month, we're going to give out 50 more certificates. So we'll have 100 food certificates for next month's food giveaway. So that means we're going to need double the volunteers next month. Amen. Also, we're going to be giving out certificates for backpacks. Amen. 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 This is an opportunity for us to touch the community where our, where our congregation uh, is located. Amen. They see us, they know us, but we, we, we want to just uh, let them know a little bit more about us. All right, so come with an attitude of, of willingness, an attitude of we're going to have fun and we're going to work at the same time. Amen. And we might win a soul. You never know. Uh, we're not going to preach to them. We're just going to reach them. Just going to talk to them. Show them that we as, sa as saints can have fun as well. Good, clean fun. That's a part of living the good life. Amen. And if God, watch this now, if God opens the door for you to one-on-one -on -one witness, then you walk through that door. Amen. Because we got water here and we can take somebody, bring them here from the park and get baptized. Amen. Amen. It could happen. I was, when Merrill and I were, were, we were living over there on Ainsworth, I was walking from the 7-Eleven and a brother came, was rolling by uh, in his SUV. He was rolling by, he said, Pastor, I said, yeah, how you doing, man? He, he said, I need to talk to you. I said, come on. Pulled him in the driveway. We went into the house and talked for a while. And then the brother came and got baptized. You never know. Walking in the neighborhood, you never know. God can use you to talk to somebody. So it's a good thing for us to be at our CUD, Community Unity Day. Amen? So we need you. We need you. We need you. <laughs> we need you. Yeah, we need we need to get excited about something. <laughs> Amen. 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 All right. All right. Thank you. Thank you. Say that again. Huh? Thank you. All right. <laughs> so we, and on the following day, that Sunday, August 27th, we're having our back to school prayer. All right. So we're giving away backpacks, and we're having a back-to-school back prayer, a prayer for scholastic success, a prayer for educational success, a prayer for protection, and a prayer for spiritual success. Amen? Amen. Because I want to I wanna pray that more of us come to Bible class. <laughs> That's a back-to-school prayer right there. <laughs> Amen. 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 All right. All right. Thank you for allowing me to change the order of our agenda here. I appreciate it. Uh, now, Sister Maggie is going to come. Oh, one more thing. Our Word for You Today books are in. So please see the sanctuary support for the Word for You Today books. First one is free. Each additional one you have to pay for. All right. Also, the FYI meetings are after we dismiss. Our sisters will be in here, and our brothers will be in the multipurpose room. All right? Um, then there is a healthcare ministry smart and tasty cafe after dismissal. <laughs> All right. Got a lot of things going on. All right. Uh, Sister Maggie, are you ready? All right. <laughs> Come on. Then I'll be back, and I have something to say about our, our giving. Thank you. You want to stay down there? All right. You're welcome. Good morning and praise the Lord, everyone. God is great. We are just um, for our health alert this month reminding you about immunizations. This is National Immunizations uh, Month. 
also National Breastfeeding Month, and I send that reminder every year so we can support our breastfeeding mothers. Breastfeeding is the first natural immunization, and there's a lot of stuff going on in your community to support um, breastfeeding and mothers and advocacy and all that. Um, Breastfeed LA has a free advocacy 101 that's going to be um, on August 31st. So if you guys want information on that, I can give it to you. But it's how to support, how community organizations can support mothers um, and advocate for them. You get a free toolkit and the event is free. So um, Sister Michelle is put in your bulletin the vaccinations for adults with diabetes. And we have on our table that you can get out there vaccination for adults, for teens, for children. There's vaccinations for every age now and it's not too late to get vaccinated. There are a lot of preventable illnesses that can be just eradicated and not even be a, uh, a condition for us to deal with if we're vaccinated. Okay, so just wanted to share that and remind you it's back to school time. Make sure the vaccinations for the kids are, are um, up to par and come get information from the table. We're gonna do blood pressure screenings later and uh, we have a, someone to sit at the health resource table and your Smart and Healthy Cafe. Thank you. Thank you. Amen. Let's pay attention to those important announcements, especially as it regards our health. Amen. All right. Uh, we uh, there. Uh, there's a uh, certain movies that I like, and uh, in one of the in one of the series, in one of the Rocky series. Are you all familiar with Rocky? In one of the Rocky series, uh, his trainer has passed, and he's in a fight. Mick is his trainer. Y'all remember Mick, right? And uh, he's in a fight. Rocky's in a fight, and uh, he gets knocked down. And, I mean, he got hit pretty good, <laughs> and, he, and he got knocked down. And then the crowd and everything is, you know, howling for everything, and then Rocky gets a flashback in his mind uh, of his trainer, Mick. He, you know, he got that little crackly voice, says, get up, you old bum, get up! You, you all remember that scene? All right. We got hit hard last Sunday in our offering. We got knocked down. We got knocked down hard in our offering. I'm not going to call you a bum, but I'm going to say, get up. <laughs> get up from there. <laughs> so you see the analogy. And what did Rocky do? He got up and won the fight. Huh? So what we're going to do today, we're going to get up and win the fight as it relates to our offering. Amen? We, as you can see from our scorecard, the, the judges' scorecards are in. <laughs> and we only achieved 53% of our goal last week. Get up from there. <laughs> Get up. This is, this is more than a bounce back. We got to stand up on this one. Amen? Amen. We understand uh, the different dynamics of vacations and everything, and it's good to go on vacations, but as we've said before, don't take what belongs to God on vacation. If you take care of your house to make sure that everything is uh, set in order so you can enjoy your vacation, don't forget the house of God. Amen? Amen. I know we're going to bounce back. I have faith that we're going to get up, we're going to shake off that punch, uh, and then we're going to go forward to victory. Amen? Amen. God, God has been too good to us for us to uh, fall back into whatever happened. We'll just take this last week as an anomaly, something that won't happen again. Yeah, yeah, we got we, we, we to be people of faith and speak that. Amen. And we have to put our faith into action. Faith without works is dead, the Bible says. Amen. So we're going to give today as unto the Lord. We're giving our tithing. We're giving our offering. We're giving our building fund uh, as unto the Lord. If you're giving this morning, 
by way of check, please make your check payable to Home Assembly Church. Home Assembly Church. If you're giving by electronic means, if you exit those doors, double doors, turn to your left, or exit these doors and turn to your right, someone will be there to receive your gifts. Amen? Amen. Just before we stand, uh, uh, we've made mention to you that beginning, Lord willing, in September, we're going to adjust our seating, all right, and the sanctuary support as a part of our smile ministry, they're going to, uh, they're going to ask you uh, to move forward. Now, what, what we've uh, noticed and we've talked about, uh, we, we want you to move forward. Now, we're going to still have the sections open, but we want you to fill in so when we are streaming, it gives us a better presentation, all right? So that means you can still, if you, if you like to sit on this side, you can still sit on this side, but you're going to have to fill up the front row. All right? And we're going to ask you, if you like to sit on this side, we're going to ask you to fill up the, fill up the front row. Now, uh, ever since VBS, I've had an expression. Anybody know what the expression I've had since VBS? We want you to fill up the front rows. Fill up the front rows. Here it is, see? And I've been saying it at Bible class. The, the first three rows are available for immediate seating. So that means we want you to fill up the first three rows, and when the sanctuary support asks you to fill up the rows, please don't uh, be disagreeable. Amen? They're, they're doing this because I've asked them to do it. All right? Um, so so don't, don't give them the heat. Put it on me. I can take it. I can handle it. But, at, but do what they say. Do what they ask you to do. Amen? All right? So we want to fill up. We don't want any gaps. All right? Thank you so much. Now, as is our custom, those who are willing and able, if you wouldn't mind standing with us this morning, hold your gifts that you're going to give to the Lord in one hand. And on the back of our church bulletin, we have our unity prayer. In reading this prayer, we're asking God's blessings upon what we're giving back to him. Amen? All right, let us begin. For this cause we bow our knees unto you, our Father and our Lord Jesus Christ, of whom the whole family in heaven and earth is named, that you would grant us according to the riches of your glory, that our church be strengthened with might by your spirit in our inner man, that you, Christ, would dwell in our hearts by faith, that we, being rooted and grounded in love, may be able to comprehend with all saints what is the breadth and length and depth and height, and that we would know the love of Christ which passeth knowledge, that we might be filled with all the goodness of God. Now unto you who is able to do exceeding abundantly above all that we ask or think, according to the power that worketh in us, unto you be glory in this church by Christ Jesus throughout all ages, world without end. For this cause also we do not cease to pray for our church and desire that we might be filled with the knowledge of your will, in all wisdom and spiritual understanding, that we might walk worthy of you, Lord, unto all pleasing, being fruitful in every good work, and increasing in the knowledge of you, strengthened with all might, according to your glorious power, unto all patience and longsuffering with joyfulness, giving thanks unto you, Father, which have made us meet to be partakers of the inheritance of the saints in light, who have delivered us from the power of darkness, and have translated us into your kingdom, Jesus. For it is in you we have redemption through your blood, even the forgiveness of sins. Furthermore, because the promises of God are true, and our latter will be greater than our past, in unity we declare that our church property will be 100% completed in God's perfect time, and will be within budget according to his perfect will. In unity, we declare that our church will be a beacon in the community to draw souls to Christ and that our hearts will be ready and open to welcome all, allowing God to get all glory for it is he that have made it so. Lord, we thank you once again for your goodness, your grace, and your mercy. We thank you, Lord God, for providing everything that we have need of. And Lord, in this act of obedient voluntary worship, we bring our tithing and we bring our offering to you, Lord God. Receive our tithing and our offering. Let this act of worship come up before you as a sweet smell and savor. And God, we ask in the name of Jesus that you would bless the tithing and the offering in the hands of our assembly that we might have 
everything that we need to fulfill all of our obligations and responsibilities. Uh, let your blessings overtake and surround everyone that gives out of a love, out of a heart of love uh, for you and a love for your ministry. We thank you and we praise you in Jesus' name. Amen. You'd be so kind as to follow the directions of our sanctuary support team from the rear. Thank you. What's going on? We're blessed. That's right. That's right. No matter what. We're blessed. And we've been commanded to bless the Lord at all times. All times. Good times, bad times, happy times, sad times. Bless him. Bless him. Bless him. Oh Lord, how excellent is thy name. He's excellent. No fault in him. No failure in him. All things are possible through him. Oh God, release the worship in this house.
to our God. All glory and honor goes to him. Amen. I'm still praying for God to gift someone in our congregation with the interpretation of tongues so that when God comes through, we can receive the edification. Amen. We can receive what God wants us to receive. Amen. It may not necessarily be the sermon that I think that I have prepared, but we want God to always have his way. Amen. Because it's not about us. It's about God. Amen. Amen. Whatever God has for us, that's what we want. And we yield to God. Amen. Amen. Lord, you formed me out of clay, and for your glory I was made. So use this vessel, Lord, as you choose. And let my life, let it praise you. I pray that you would bring thoughts to my mind, give me clarity of speech. I pray, Lord God, that you would take complete control by your spirit and edify your body by your word as it is declared today. I ask and receive this now in Jesus' name. Amen. I'm still on the thought of the good life. <laughs> and... Uh, I, um, I'm on that thought, and this is for me, this is part three of the series, and uh, on the thought of the good life, and then the, there's a thought that's on my mind to come, that comes underneath that for, for, for today, and that thought is heaven-bound living, heaven-bound living. Uh, because as I was thinking about this, if you live the good life, as God determines the good life, then you're, doing, you're actually living heaven-bound living. Uh, so walk with me, if you will, to St. John, the Gospel of John, the 14th chapter. Uh, we'll look at some things and we'll maybe compare and contrast some scripture and what we find happening in some of our lives or if we find certain things happening in some of our lives. I believe God wants us to be thinking people. Uh, he don't, I don't believe he wants us to just follow blindly, but he wants us, I think there's a scripture that talks about, you know, you're getting, get an understanding. Amen? All right, so this is a very, very familiar passage of scripture in the 14th chapter of St. John, uh, beginning at verse number 1. I have the Amplified Version of the Bible, and here's what it says. Do not let your hearts be troubled, distressed, agitated. You believe in and adhere to and trust in and rely on God. Believe in and adhere to and trust in and rely on me also. So this is Jesus talking now, all right? So he, he, he doesn't want his listeners, his disciples, the people that he's teaching, he don't want them to be troubled or in their hearts or distress. There, 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 there were a lot of things that were going on even in Jesus' time that would m cause one's heart naturally to be troubled. Uh, first of all, the teaching that Jesus brought down from heaven was different from the teaching of the Pharisees and the Sadducees, the, the people who were in religious power in Jesus' day. And, but what, what is quite fascinating, though, is if, that, if they would have truly understood the teaching of Moses, then they would have readily accepted the teaching of Jesus because Moses said that the Lord was going to raise up a prophet like unto me amongst your brethren. And so the Old Testament, it was given indications uh, and indicators that about the message that Jesus was going to bring down. But oftentimes what happens, the pure message of God, it gets convoluted in the tradition uh, of men. So we have to be careful that we don't convolute or taint the message and intent that God has. Because remember, Jesus in his ministry said, search the scriptures. For in them you think you have eternal life, but they, the scriptures, the Old Testament, that they, they held, you know, their, 
their pride and their, and their prominence in the, in the earth. The, the scriptures was talking about Jesus, and they missed it. So sometimes you can, believe it or not, uh, be, be uh, in a religious environment and still miss Jesus. It's not necessarily, you know, just a religious environment is not the end all. But what's, what's most important is that you get to know Jesus. What's most important is that you get to know the one whose God manifested in the flesh. It's what's most important is that you get to know the only way of salvation that God has given to man. Uh, I heard something on the, on the radio today that kind of disturbed me. Uh, uh, it was a religious channel, and the gentleman was, was saying uh, you need to uh, go to a church or to a spiritual uh, uh, arena or something, something how he phrased it where he kind of left it ambiguous. Uh, there's a whole lot of spiritual people that don't know Jesus. Uh, so it, just because you, you might uh, call yourself a spiritual person, uh, it's what God calls you that really counts. Amen. So here Jesus is telling his disciples, he says, he says, don't let your heart be troubled. You believe in God. He said, believe also in me. Uh, so, 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 so basically, uh, he's saying, uh, um, I'm, I'm the representative of God. I, 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 I and my father are one. He said it in one place. Uh, but here, he's just trying to get their faith to reach to a point where they don't, they're not anxious. And we're living in a day and time when things that we see on the world stage may cause some anxiousness in our human mind. But we have to know and understand that all these things must happen. Uh, all these things are working according to God's master plan. God uh, has to have certain things to come in place uh, in order for the things that he has already ordained to happen to happen. So we should not be weary. We should not be anxious. Uh, but we should be aware. We should be sober. We should be vigilant. We shouldn't be walking around with our heads in the clouds or we shouldn't be with our heads in the sand. But we have to know what time it is. It is actually a time where, where God, I believe, is calling us uh, to, uh, for use of a military term, to close ranks. Uh, he's, he's, he's calling us uh, 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 to get in alignment uh, and to make sure that uh, we are in alignment with his word because if we make sure that we are in alignment with his word then whenever the trump sounds we'll be ready to go so god is he he, he is bringing these things to our attention and he's 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 allowing these things to get the attention the attention of the church uh to let us know that we still have a mission amen and uh we have to be mission ready all the time uh, so he said in verse number two, in my father's house, uh, there are many dwelling places, many homes. If it were not so, I would have told you, for I am going away to prepare a place for you. So now that's good news to the followers of Jesus Christ. That should be heartwarming and comforting news uh, because the Lord said that he's going to prepare a place for us. Anybody happy about the place that God is preparing for us? Amen. A place where there will be no sin. Glory. Hallelujah. A place where there will be no conflict. Glory. Hallelujah. A place where there will be no pain. A place where there will be no death. A place where there will be no suffering. Ah, I'm looking for that place. And I'm glad that God is the one who's going to prepare it. Jesus himself, he said, I'm, I'm going to prepare it. Uh, then he said in verse number three, and if and I go and make ready a place for you, I will come back again and will take you to myself that where I am you may be also. Look at the confidence uh, that we should have in Jesus Christ. He said, I'm going to make the place. I'm going to prepare the place. And matter of fact, I'm coming back to get you and take you to the place that I'm preparing. <laughs> glory. Hallelujah. Ha, ha, glory. Glory. What a, what, what, what I, I, I'm filled with anticipation uh, to go to that place uh, uh, that's prepared by Jesus himself. Amen, amen. Ah, uh, so, 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 so then he said in verse number four, and to the place where I'm going, you know. You know where I'm going. Thomas, verse five, Thomas said to him, Lord, we don't know where you're going, so how can we know the way? Uh, Jesus said in verse six, uh, Jesus said to him, I am the way <laughs> and the truth and the life. No one 
comes to the Father except through me. So basically Jesus is saying, look, if you, were, if you ever needed a way, here's a way. <laughs> Glory, hallelujah. He said, I'm the way. <laughs> All you got to do is follow me. All you have to do is adhere to my teaching. All you have to do is live like I lived. All you have to do is love what I love. I'm the way. And if you're looking for truth, here it is. I'm the truth. Every word of God is true. And he's a, he's a shield and buckler to those that trust in him. So he was looking, Thomas was looking at truth. He was looking at truth. Then he said, I am the life. So if you expect life, if you expect to receive life, then you got to go through Jesus Christ. He said, no one comes to the Father except through me. So if you expect to go to the place, if you expect uh, 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 to be in that mansion, uh, you got to come through Jesus Christ. Lord, have mercy. You got to come through the only one who is the way. You got to come through the only one who is the truth and the only one who is the life. Now, we receive this as believers of Jesus Christ. We appreciate this and, and we are happy uh, 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 about this because we know that there is a hope and a place for us, uh, for, the, for those of us who are willing uh, to live like Jesus uh, commands us to live for those of us uh, who are willing to sacrifice certain things uh, down here for those of us who are willing to take up our cross daily and follow him we're not doing this uh, uh, with no end in sight first of all we're doing this because we love the Lord first of all we're doing this because we, we are so glad that we are recipients of this great salvation and uh, just uh, you know something just let me say this if all there was if all there was for living for God was to have peace of mind here on earth and have strength uh, to go through and have God to help us to go through whatever we face through life, that right there would be a whole lot more than what the world uh, is offering us. Uh, but uh, we have peace, we have confidence, uh, we have the faithfulness and the power and the help of God uh, on this side of eternity and uh, we got a promised place uh, that he is building for us. Uh, so I'm, I'm happy. I'm happy. Uh, the Bible says in one place, if only in this life we had hope in Christ, we would be of all men most miserable. But aren't you glad that we have a hope beyond the grave? Aren't you glad that we have a hope uh, that transcends this world? Aren't you glad that we have a hope, not only a hope, but we have a sure promise uh, that is going to be fulfilled uh, on the other side uh, of eternity because Jesus uh, is building a house for us. Uh, so heaven, heaven is a prepared place uh, and he's working on it. Uh, he has all the dimensions. He has, he's going to make it fit uh, for each and every one of us. Uh, now oftentimes, oftentimes uh, when we, when we uh, uh, take the Lord's uh, cup and we uh, uh, consume communion, uh, there's a scripture, there's a scripture uh, that points to a future event uh, in heaven, I believe, and that's Matthew, Matthew, the 26th chapter, and verse number 29, Jesus speaking, he says, I say to you, I shall not drink again of this fruit of the vine until that day when I drink it with you new and of superior quality in my father's kingdom. So this points to, oh, there's going to be some great things happening uh, all over on the other side. There's going to be, I, I mean, to be able to sit down and to feast with Jesus uh, at the marriage uh, of the Lamb. Uh, uh, that, that, uh, that is something to look forward to. Uh, that is something to live forward to. Uh, so, 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 yes, there are incentives. Yes, there are incentives for living the good life uh, as God describes it because the, the the, the main incentive is uh, that we're going to see Jesus in peace. <laughs> Glory, hallelujah. All our trials will be over. All our heartaches will be over. So this is something that should drive us to want to live like God wants us to live. This is something that the very word of God and the very promises of God are things that, that should motivate us and sustain us in, a, in order that we might go through whatever we have to go through to get to where God wants to take us. All right, so we're excited about the fact that there's a mansion that God is preparing for us. We're excited about the fact that he, we're going to be able to sit down at the marriage supper of the Lamb and enjoy a feast with God. Amen. To enjoy a feast with God. Now, 
So now there's, there, th there's a situation here that we need to contrast, okay? So now if I live, if we live uh, according to how God wants us to live, there is a great inheritance uh, for us because the Bible declares that we are heirs and joint heirs uh, with Jesus Christ. Uh, so that means whatever Jesus get, we get too, all right? If, if, but there's a condition we got to, first of all, we got to be born again. Right? Then, then uh, because listen, you cannot, you cannot begin to even live uh, the good life uh, until you get the new life. All right? So in order for you to live a good life, uh, Jesus said in one place you got to be born again of the water and of the spirit. So now there, there, there are some who, who, who are not living uh, this way. Now Paul spoke in the book of Ephesians uh, uh, to the saints at Ephesus and he was giving them some advice and giving them some warnings in verse number three of chapter number five of Ephesians uh, uh, this is what he's this is what he says he says but immorality sexual vice and all impurity of lustful rich wasteful living or greediness must not even be named among you as is fitting and proper among saints God's consecrated people now this this sounds like what the world considers the good life. The world considers uh, sexual vice, impu impurity, lustful, rich, wasteful living, or greediness. They figure that is the good life. I can do what I want with who I want. I can have what I want. I can get, you know, get rich or die trying. I ain't trying to plug a movie, but it was already out there. Right? You know, I can just do whatever I want to do. Right? This is what the world considers the, the good life. But Paul is saying that's not the good life. Paul is saying as for saints, that shouldn't even be named among us. So he is, he is causing us to examine. He's causing the saints at Ephesus uh, uh, to examine uh, where their head is. Uh, then he said, he says, let there be no filthiness, no obscenity, it, no indecency, no foolish and sinful, silly and corrupt talk nor coarse jesting, which are not fitting or becoming, but instead voice your thankfulness to God. So he's saying that, look, we as saints, uh, we as saints uh, or the saints at Ephesus should, should, shouldn't be uh, using obs obscene language. Mm, okay, I'm going to let that marinate for a minute because uh, yeah, I've been cussed out by saints more than one. All right. I've been cussed out. Amen. Now, he's writing this letter to saints, so evidently there was a problem with some of the saints at Ephesus. Right? I'm not saying it is y'all, but if it's you, then it is you. All right? He said, let there be no filthiness, obscenity, indecency. All right? So there's some, there was some indecency going on. Mm? And there was some sexual perversion going on. Real quiet. Then he said... Listen, uh, uh, how in the world do we expect to go to the place that God is preparing, that Jesus himself is preparing, and we're dealing with some of this stuff if we're dealing with it? Huh? That, ain't, that is not the good life, as God calls the good life. He said, no fo nor foolish and sinful, silly, corrupt talk. So that means we can't be doing these things. All right? We just can't do it and expect to say, oh, yeah, well, I'm going. I'm, I'm making myself ready. Are you really making yourself ready? Huh? Then he said, uh, nor coarse jesting. That means you can't be having no dirty jokes. Oh, I got to tell you this one. No, I ain't got to tell you nothing. Huh? And matter of fact, if I see you starting, I'm going to excuse myself from the surroundings. I don't even want to be in the environment of a dirty joke. I don't want to be in the environment. I'm, uh, listen, if, if, if that's all you can do at the water cooler, I'm going to bring my water from home so I ain't got to go to the water cooler. Because huh? that's a spot where you're going to tell your little dirty jokes. That's okay, I'll bring mine. You see? There has to be a difference. There has to be a difference. Then he said, instead, voice your thankfulness to God. We ought to be thanking God every day. You know what? We ought to be thanking God just for the use of our bodies. We ought to be thanking God that when we wake up in the morning. We ought to be thanking God uh, that we can get up out of the bed. We ought to be thanking God every time we eliminate. Huh? Because one thing can happen and we won't be able to do the things that we so much take for granted. We ought to be thanking God. 
huh? when we get in the car and get to our destination, how those cars are engineered. Do you know there's fire and explosive in your engine? Huh? And something could happen and, and it could blow up. So every time you start your car and it don't blow up and you get to point A to point B, you ought to be thanking God for safe passage. Hmm? Uh, wait a minute, wait a minute. Well, what were you talking about? The Bible did say in everything give thanks. All right, so thank God for a safe journey. Thank God for a good night's sleep. Thank God for protection. You see, so now if our mouth is filled with thankfulness, then we don't have time for that other stuff. Huh? God, God, I thank you that I can pull my own pants up. Huh? I thank you that I can button my own shirt. Huh? God, I thank you that I can, although I'm wearing glasses, I can still see. Huh? Thank you that I can feed myself. We don't know how blessed we are. We don't know how blessed we are. Oh, take a trip to a hospital bed. Uh, take a trip to a hospital ward and see people that can't change themselves. Uh, see people that can't clean up themselves. See people that can't feed themselves. And then we have nerve enough to complain because we're facing a little trouble. Instead, your voice should be thankfulness to God. Ah, be, now, here's, here's what he, he backs this up. He undergirds this. He says, verse 5, For be sure of this, that no person practicing sexual vice or impurity in thought or in life. Well, that covers a whole lot right there. Huh? First of all, he gets the sexual vice. And just let me say, we, we are not stupid. We know that some people in the church are committing sexual vices. God said, cut it out. Be sure of this, that no person practicing sexual vice or impurity in thought or in life. What's on your mind? Huh? What are you looking at? Huh? If, we, if we was to confiscate your electronic devices hmm, and do a download of the sites that you visit, about 2.30, 305, 410 in the morning, uh, if we would just download uh, the sites that you visit. Hmm? Do you know that pornography is an epidemic even in the church? Huh? What we going to do, brothers? Well, no, no. The brothers should have answered. The sisters shouldn't have had to answer that. Yeah, but the sisters are involved too, but it's mostly a man. It's mostly a man thing. But we got sisters involved in it too, but I asked the brothers first because we're supposed to be leaders. So brothers, what we gonna do? Huh? All right. Sisters, what we gonna do? Huh? Yes. Yeah, yeah. With this sex thing and texting, it just ain't young folks. Come on, it just that. Come on, this is the y'all. Do y'all really want to live the good life? So we have to expose the things that are not, that does not equate to the good life, right? Sexual immorality, right? Uh, impurity in thoughts. What goes through your head most of the time? Impure thoughts. All right. No person who practices these things, or one who is covetous. One who has a lustful desire for the property of others and is greedy for gain. Is there any covetousness in the house? But how did she get that? How did he get that? Look like every time I turn around, he got this, she got that. I wish I had, I wish I had, I wish I had. And then that becomes your major focus. I don't like her. Why? Because she got this. I don't like him. I don't like them because they got that. That's a covetous spirit. And you think you're going to the mansion? Not with that spirit, you're not. Others who are greedy for gain. All right? What you greedy? I think we talked about last week uh, or one of the weeks before having food and raiment there was to be content. But, but we are not content therewith. We want more. We want more food. We want more raiment. Thank you. We want more money, more money. 
I, I don't know why I'm putting all these plugs in here. <laughs> That's what we want, right? That's what we want. You know, now, but see, we're not, we're not honest enough to say that's what we want. We want to put on a show. We want to say, oh, I'm, I'm, I'm happy with Jesus alone. No, you're not. Then why are you working two jobs? Huh? huh? Why are you working two jobs? I'm happy with Jesus alone. See, we don't even sing that song no more. We, we, maybe we forgot that was in the hymn book. Hmm? Because, again, the encroachment of the world's thinking has invaded our minds. And then, and then there's a, there, is a, there is a diabolical side that says, if God's with you, then you got more of this and more of that and, and more of this. That's diabolical. Huh? Huh? Ooh, okay, let me break that diabolical. That comes from the devil. Huh? Yes, it does. It comes from the devil. Jesus didn't have a place to lay his head. Jesus didn't own any property. Hmm? As we look at it, but, he's, but the word says the earth is the Lord's and the fullness thereof, right? How are you going to take something from the, from, how are you going to claim something and take something from the, from the one who made it? God said, all this is mine. Huh? The cattle on a thousand hills is mine. If, if, if I needed something, God said, I wouldn't ask you if I needed something. If I needed something, I could just make it. <laughs> huh? And then, and then sometimes, sometimes, uh, I know I'm going off script here, but I think God is leading me. I know uh, 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 sometimes we pile all this stuff up, and then we, and when we transition, and they fight, I've seen families fight and not speak over some property, over some few, few coins. And I've seen families destroy legacies uh, with greed because of greed. I, I won't talk to her. But that's your sister. That's your brother. I ain't, I ain't none of my sister. I disown. How you gonna disown? Huh? How you gonna disown somebody? Huh? How you, I, what, what is that? Do you have any power or authority to do that anyway? No, but see, that's, uh, that's in your mind. Be sure of this, that that no person practice in sexual vice or impurity in thought or in life. So if you live in an impure life, you ain't going to inherit this mansion. Or, or is greedy for gain, for he in effect is an idolater, has any inheritance in the kingdom of Christ and of God. So don't think you're going to inherit it. All right? Let no one delude and deceive you with empty excuses and groundless arguments for these sins. See, these type, this type of lifestyle is sin. And you got some people say, oh, well, it's all right. No, it's not all right. So don't let nobody deceive you. Don't let nobody delude you with empty excuses. Do the best you can. No, no, uh-uh, we ain't going for that. Not if you say it ain't no do the best you can. Oh, no, 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 no. I can do all things through Christ that gives me strength. That strength is me. Paul said, I know how to abound and I know how to abase. So, uh, listen, all I have to do is yield. Again, step down off the throne of my life and put God back on the throne of my life. And God can successfully take me through everything that I need to go through. I can do all things through Christ that strengthens me. Thanks be unto God who always causes me to triumph. So God is always victorious and God can always cause me to be, to be victorious if I choose to yield myself to him and to his word and stop trying to figure out God and stop trying to do things my way. All I have to do is yield to the spirit of God that, that he gave me. And because I hear the Bible said in one place, they that are led by the spirit of God, they are the sons of God. So if I'm being led by the spirit of God, then sometimes I'm going to be led into some uncomfortable things that my flesh and my mind and my own human reasoning does not want to deal with, but God knows what it takes for me to go 
and grow. So God will send me sometimes or he will have his spirit lead us sometimes into situations that will shape and reveal the very character that he placed in us. So yes, we will be tested. Yes, we will be tried. But no, we will not be abandoned. So if God brings us a test, if God brings a situation to us, if God brings a circumstance to us, then God has already pre-approved the situation and the test and the circumstance, and he knows that we are able to bear it. Because I hear the word say, with the temptation, God will always provide a way of escape so that you may be able to bear it. So the next temptation comes, look at it as a challenge for you to, for you to show how mighty God is. Not how strong I am, not how strong or smart you are, but if I humble myself, if we humble ourselves under the mighty hand of God, God will exalt us in due time. God can take us through the trial, and the trial can be a teaching moment. The trial can be a moment of clarity that we can see just how powerful our great God is. God wants us to experience him in ways that we have not experienced him as of yet. And sometimes it's going to cause for some suffering on our part. Sometimes it's going to cause for some hurt on our part. Sometimes it's going to cause uh, for, for some humility on our part. But you know what he's doing? He is fashioning us. Uh, he is molding us. Uh, he is purifying us uh, through the fire of tests uh, and trials uh, because that's what you got to do to go. Uh, go, uh, it needs uh, the heat uh, of the furnace. Uh, go needs uh, 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 that heat, uh, that intense heat uh, in certain areas. So God uh, is sometimes it seems like uh, we're facing one thing uh, after another uh, and it seems like uh, there's no end in sight, uh, but just hold on, uh, just hold on, uh, because uh, he uh, that will come uh, shall come, uh, and his reward uh, is with him. Don't you take yourself uh, out of the fire, because, uh, listen, God's in the fire with you. Uh, he made the fire. He prescribed the fire. He ordered the fire, and it won't do anything uh, but make you look just like him. Uh, what the fire will do, uh, what the test of life will do, it will make us, uh, it will reveal the dross uh, that is in us. Uh, because, uh, just in case you didn't know it, uh, breaking news, uh, there's no good thing uh, in this flesh. Uh, and there's still some sin uh, in this body. So sometimes uh, God has to turn up the heat. Uh, he has to turn up the fire so the sin uh, can ooze out. Uh, he said, ooh, uh, I didn't know that was there. Uh, but thank God uh, he showed it to me when he did. Uh, ooh, wait a minute. Uh, there's another spot uh, over here. Uh, wait, there's something thing going on uh, in the back corner and recesses of my mind uh, that I thought I was done with, uh, but the fire and the situation uh, caused it to come to the forefront, uh, and God, uh, who is so great uh, in mercy, uh, he allows us uh, to see uh, ourselves. Uh, he allows us uh, to see uh, that we need him. Uh, thank God uh, for repentance uh, that's in the foundation uh, of the doctrine of Jesus Christ, because uh, every time uh, a spot shows up uh, in my life, uh, God brings it uh, glory hallelujah to my attention and he allows me space look son there's something there I can't shout that out I got to repent I got to repent and ask God for forgiveness and God is so kind he's so gracious he turned the heat up on me because I wouldn't turn the heat up on myself but he turned the heat up on me and allowed the sin to ooze out of my mind ooze out in my members and say what you going to do with that? That's how God talks to me. Listen, you ain't got to have a PhD to talk to God. God knows Ebonics. If all you know is Ebonics, God will talk to you in Ebonics. God will say, what's up with that? How you going to deal with that? So that means I got to deal with it. I can't hide it because God showed it to me. So I got to say, yeah, Lord, you got me again. That was me. I sure was thinking that. So I got to confess. I got to repent. And God is so kind. God is so loving that he forgives me. Oh, glory. Immediately. All that, that, that's the good. You're talking about a good life. When you mess up, when I mess up, I ain't got to go through a three-day waiting period. I ain't got to go through a 30-day probation. All I got to do is confess my sin and repent of it. And God said, clean. Now get up. 
Get up from there, you bum. Get up and fight. Fight the good fight of faith. Lay hold on eternal life. God said, I called you. I called you to live a sanctified life. I call each and every one of my children, and I've given them power. I've given them victory. So when you fall, and you will fall from time to time, don't wallow in your falling. Get up from there. Shake yourself off. Look up to God and say, yeah, God, that was me that time. You're right. My bad. You got me, God. And all I got to do is acknowledge her. Listen, if you cover your sin, you will not prosper. You can't cover nothing from God, so you might as well come clean. That's the part of living the good life. I can come clean to God. I can let God know, yeah, I did lust after her. Because God, you know she's kind of fine. <laughs> yeah, I did lust after him because uh, he got it going on. Uh, but God, forgive me. And if you mean it, uh, now you can't front with God. Uh, you might front with me uh, or some of us. Uh, but if you mean it, uh, God looks at your heart and says, forgive him. What a good life uh, to be forgiven uh, from the initial sin uh, and to be forgiven uh, from subsequent sins uh, if we do uh, what the good word uh, tells us to do. Glory. Uh, that's a good life. That's a good life. Because mm -hmm. the devil tried to tell you, he tried to tell us, oh man, you done messed up this time. Oh, you can't, you can't recover. Oh, he's a liar. The devil is a liar. He's the father of lies. All I got to do is go to my father. I got to come clean. Say, God, I wanted to do it, <laughs> and I did it. Uh, Lord, help me to hate it like you hate it. Because the problem, oh God, the problem is that sometimes we like it. Sometimes we like it. So then that's, that's where that battle intensifies. You know, I, you know uh, I want attention. Nobody's paying me attention. Y'all got to be quiet. I must have hit a vein there. Well, I'm going to work it. <laughs> I want attention. Nobody's paying me attention. There's no, there's no, oh, Lord, I'm going there. There's no saved brothers or saved sisters in the church. There's no uh, available brothers. Oh, Lord. There's no available sisters in the church. There's no available young people that I can kick it with. What kind of kicking you, you doing? Hmm? Why don't you invite somebody to church? Listen, when and if God wants you to find a mate, don't you think God is smart enough huh, to set things up for you? Huh? What you worry? You, oh, okay, now I believe this, and I'll tell you why I believe this. Because there's nothing new to God. Whatever meat is for you, God has already picked him or her out. Oh, Lord. Well, you say that you married. You've been married 32 years. How you? We met in a bar. Whoop. But God knew that. The bar is no longer there. It has served its purpose. Glory. <laughs> Hallelujah. It ain't even there no more. Look at God. I'm rejoicing in that. Glory. <laughs> it ain't there no more. But it was there when I needed to meet her. Mm -hmm. And we were not saved. Huh? We met in a bar. We were not saved. But guess what? Her mother was saved. And her mother 
was a member of Emmanuel Temple Church in Bakersfield. So her mother had been praying. So after her mother passed, listen, prayers have no expiration date. So now I'm sure her mother didn't know that I was going to meet her in a bar. Huh? But the prayers were still in that bar with her. So when we met in the bar and we hooked up, I didn't know that her mother was saved. I didn't know that. I didn't know nothing about really being saved. But uh, we started shacking up. I don't advise it. Shacking up is wrong. Get, get, get good on the camera. Shacking up was wrong. We were in sin. We weren't saved yet. I do not advise it. So I told her, I said, uh, we need to get married. She was like, ooh. I said, we can't keep doing this. See, listen, 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 listen. See, even if you're not saved, God put something in us to know right from wrong. Yeah, you can try to cover it up with the weed and cover it up with the get high, but you know when you're wrong. Come on, come on, come on. You feel me on that one? Yeah, you know when you're wrong. Uh, you ain't even got to go with the church building, but you know, oh, no, this ain't right. No, nah, man, I can't keep doing this. This ain't right. I got to get it together. Right? You know that. So I told her. I said, we need to get married. We went to Las Vegas. Ooh, Sin City. That's all right. That was all in the plan. We went to Las Vegas, got married in May, came to the church, got saved in June. <laughs> Glory. <laughs> Hallelujah. <laughs> Woo. Huh? That's in the plan of God. I, yeah, that's a good life. Uh-oh, uh-oh, I'm going to brag on God, but this might make me look good just a little bit. But when I saw her, she was with somebody else. <laughs> glory, <laughs> glory, <laughs> glory. <laughs> she was with somebody else. And I got a code. You know, you, you, know, you got a street code. If, 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 uh, if, if y'all just bear with me. I'm helping y'all. I think I am. I'm trying. It's a code on the street. If, if somebody with somebody, then you don't step to them. So that's out of respect. That's just a street thing. You know. So anyway, I was working downtown, and she was uh, working at the L.A. Athletic Club. I was staying at a Skid Row Hotel, and she was staying at a different one. And I worked for a Korean gentleman on Broadway, and she would get off of work and pass where I worked. And I was like, hey, okay. I was checking her out. I was cutting keys on the key machine, checking her out. So one day, I had to go to the bathroom. And I stopped by the bar to go to the bathroom on my way to my Skid Row Hotel. And guess who was sitting up at the bar by herself? <laughs> Marilyn. <laughs> and she was by herself. By herself. So I went to the bathroom, and as I'm washing my hands, I said, uh-oh, this might be a good chance. Mm, what you gonna do, Scooby? <laughs> so I walked up to the bar. And I asked her, I said, do you mind if I sit here? She said, no. 32 years later, here we are. God is great. Only God could put something like that together. I got saved on a Wednesday, invited her to come to church. She got saved that Sunday. Amen. And we've been trying to live the good life ever since, huh? We've been trying. <laughs> but, but, but I said all that to say, live your life for God. God has, I believe he's already picked out the mate for you. He's already picked. Don't be anxious. Don't make too quick of a choice. Oh, Lord, don't do it. Don't do it. And don't. Don't. You him or her sampled the merchandise. Uh, okay, I'm going to say that again. That, that didn't go over too good. Don't you, him, or her sample the merchandise. All right. Okay. All right. Shall I, shall I go further? Just a little further. Stay out of close quarters when it's just you and the other person. Huh? You, what you, you ain't got no business being hugged up. Huh? You, you got the lights 
low. You got the music going. Oh, we just going to Netflix and chill. The devil is a lie. Huh? Yeah, the devil is a lie. Oh, no, we just going to kick it. I just like being around. No, no. Get up and get out of there. Huh? Turn the lights on. Huh? In fact, y'all need to go on double dates and go to a public place. Don't go to Junebug Sugar Shack. Mm -mm. Go to Red Lobster. <laughs> Turn some lights on. Uh, go to Cheesecake Factory. And end the date, then you all go your separate ways. Because there's no good thing that dwells in the flesh. Don't tempt yourself. Oh, I can maintain. No, you can't. No, you can't. No, you can't. The good life. I'm trying to teach us something that will help us. Uh, if, you, if you will receive it, it'll help you. It'll help you. Uh-uh, you ain't got no I ain't got no business feeling on her, and he ain't got no business feeling on me. Right? Because one thing will lead to another. Oh, you talking about this in church? This is what we need to talk about it. Because the streets will tell you, oh, yeah, just do it. Everybody's doing it. Go ahead. Go ahead. Satisfy your desires. The devil is a liar. Huh? Keep yourself. Keep yourself. What an honor, what an honor, what an honor, what an honor it would be for you and your spouse to present yourselves on your wedding night as virgins. Is that a bad word in the church? Huh? Ain't nobody said nothing. What an honor it would be for you and your spouse to present yourselves as virgins on your wedding night. Keep yourself. All right, I'm going to stop. I'm going to stop. I hope you all invite me back next week. Because I got some more stuff to tell you about the good life. But one thing that I will share as a conclusion, there was a man who, uh, who was a religious leader in Jesus' day. There was a man who was a religious leader and scholar and a leader in Israel. And he heard about and he saw some of the things that Jesus was doing in his ministry when Jesus started his ministry, his public ministry. And he came to Jesus by night. This man was Nicodemus. He said, we know that you are a teacher sent from God, but nobody can do the things that you do except God be with him. For an average person or an average minister, minister probably would have got the big head on that moment. They said, well, you know, the Lord just blesses me like that. I just flow like that. But Jesus said, I assure you, most solemnly I tell you, that unless a person is born again, anew from above, he cannot ever see, know, be acquainted with, and experience the kingdom of God. Nicodemus said to him, how can a man be born when he is old? Can he enter his mother's womb again and be born? Jesus answered, I assure you, most solemnly I tell you, Unless a man is born of water and even the spirit, he cannot ever enter into the kingdom of God. What is born of or from the flesh is flesh, of the physical is physical, and what is born of the spirit is spirit. Marvel not, do not be surprised, do not be astonished at my telling you, you all must be born anew from above. So we say to you this morning, if you, if you want to enter into beginning to live the good life, you all, you must be born again of the water and of the Spirit, or else you can't even see the kingdom of God. Somebody want to be born again this morning? This is an invitation for you to begin living the good life. You can't begin to live the good life until you're born again. Are you here this morning? Are you here? Do you appreciate and recognize the sacrifice of Jesus Christ on the cross for your sins, for my sins, for the sins of the world? Are you here this morning? Are you here? I want to be saved. 
I want to be born again of the water and of the spirit. I want the new life so I can live the good life. I want the eternal life. I want the infilling of the spirit of God. I want the infilling of the precious gift of the Holy Ghost. Speaking in other tongues as the spirit of God gives utterance. Born of the spirit according to the Bible. If that's what you want, God's here for you. Jesus said, don't let your heart be troubled. You believe in God, believe also in me. God has a mansion that he's preparing, but he's preparing it for people who have made themselves ready. And the initial step for you making yourself ready, you got to be born again. You can't get in. I can't get you in. You can't shake nobody's hand and get in. You got to be born in. You got to repent of your sins. You got to be sorry for your sins. You got to have faith in the finished work of the cross, the finished work of Calvary. Jesus went to the cross and died for our sins. He was risen on the third day according to the scriptures for our justification. Sent back the precious gift of the Holy Ghost. If you want that Bible salvation, it's here for you today. Are you here? Are you here? If you're in the sanctuary and you have a prayer request, if you have a prayer request, you can come now for your prayer request. When you come, come in faith. Come believing that what you're asking God for, that he's going to give it to you according to his word. If you're here, you can come for prayer. Come in faith. If you have doubt, don't come. If you doubt, don't come. But if you believe that God will answer your prayer according to his word, we invite you to come. We are the Apostolic Faithful Assembly Church located in the city of Los Angeles, California. We thank you for tuning in to our live stream. There's the number on your screen. If you call that number on your screen, if you have a prayer request, someone will be there to take your prayer request. We thank you for tuning in with us this week. If we live in the Lord will, we will see you Wednesday at 7 p.m. for our midweek Bible study. God bless you in Jesus' name. Jesus.